Hi, I'd like to show you why we're so excited about the new Seed Code Complete for FileMaker 13 and why we think it's a great way to start new projects in FileMaker. This is how we um, start new projects in FileMaker when we, we're doing custom work. And uh, I think it gives a lot of opportunities for uh, beginner and intermediate FileMaker developers to take something that's easy to modify, but has a lot of power and stuff already done for them under the hood, a lot of complexity already handled, um, in that it's linking you know, contacts, projects, companies, invoices, and all that activity, linking that all into a calendar for you, and then kind of giving you a canvas to extend that for your situation or your customer. So let's look at those two aspects of it, like the first being that it's easy to modify, and the second that there's some power under the hood and, and some complicated stuff that you can rely on um, later as you get into it. Um, so to begin with, let's just take a look at this user here. So I'm at contacts and I'm looking at the contacts, you know, that I'm associated with. I could, you know, type in here and look for more contacts, but I just kind of starting with the contacts that are pinned to me. And I'm going to grab a demo user here and look at them. And the first thing you can see is that we can see some information about them right here, some information about their notes, and even about, you know, additional email addresses or phone numbers they may have. This is a pattern you'll see throughout complete that you can look at details like this about a contact kind of in place without having to jump around a lot. Um, that said, let's jump over to their record and um, you can see that we've got some associations here, some notes about them, a couple of different ways to look at those notes. You can sort that by date, um, a list of their projects, invoices that they're working on, and then uh, you know the details about any one invoice. Again, you can see this pattern of kind of sliding um, back and forth. And while that looks really cool, it's actually really simple to work with. So let's go into layout mode and see what that looks like. So the first thing you notice is that when you drop into layout mode, you kind of drop into layout mode where you are. I was on the invoices tab and there I am. And if I double click here, out from the gray area here, you'll see that this is a slide control and they're just a bunch of them. And if I go to the first one, first, you'll see that we're here in additional contacts. And as I start going through them, you'll see we're going to start walking through here. So here's my associations. Now I'm going to edit the associations, and then I'm going to look at a particular contact and learn more about them. And so it's really easy to kind of just use this slide control to walk through the different um, slides on the layout. And it's very easy to do that without getting lost. And there aren't a lot of stacked objects here. You can kind of see there's just kind of one object at a time. Um, the other thing that's kind of cool here and maybe not obvious right away, I'm going to kind of double click on this person's name and see that it's a merge field and it's selected contacts name first last. This contacts name happens to be demo user. But look at this contact, selected contacts name first last. So let's go back into browse mode. And remember we saw a very similar layout like this. Um, it's uh, this layout right here. Let me click on an associate, right? We saw a very similar layout to this on the home screen. So let's go over to the home layout and look at that and grab somebody else here and go into layout mode. So here's the same kind of what we call this the badge, right? A badge of information about the contact. Now watch what happens when I double click here. It's the same context. And what that means is, and this is part of the selector connector framework that we use for managing the relationship graph here. But what this means is that if I want to change something about this display, like move this around or change the all sorts of stuff, I can do that wherever I find it and then copy this whole object onto other layouts where it's used because it's the same context, both here on the home screen and over on the contacts record, which is uh, pretty cool and makes things very easy to modify. So that's kind of about you know, how easy this is to modify. And I, I should mention one other thing is that, you know, while we've put things on here we think are useful, like notes and events and payments, there's a lot of room on here. The idea is that this is a canvas for you and you can see there's a lot of white space for you to add your own fields, blank tabs for you to extend. Just kind of a lot of space in here for you to customize this for what you need for your users and, and your workflow. So speaking of workflow, let's, let's dive in a little deeper here to maybe some of the complexity that we've uh, anticipated for you. So if I uh, look at the projects that this user's working on, let's, um, let's click on this one, see some information about it, some notes, but I can go over to that project's record and now I can see these events, uh, calendar events about it. We, can, we have notes about the project and we have media, be it, be it photographs or files associated with the project, which is cool. But let, let's look at the calendar events because this is kind of where projects tend to go sideways is that we, we lose track of things or we lose track of dates. How do these events get here in the first place? Because it can be kind of laborious to bang in all this information for every project, especially when part of what you're trying to do is create patterns within your company, patterns for things that work and then apply them project after project. 
So let's take a look at that. I'm going to slide over to a new project here. This is uh, the second remodel we're doing for Albert Hall. We've made a quote. We've sent the quote uh, back on the fourth. Um, so now let's say they're ready to uh, get started. So I'm going to edit the project. You see, we'll slide over here. We have a cancel button in case we make a mistake. We can just cancel that edit. But I'm going to edit the project, and I'm going to say that uh, the status is no longer quote, we're ready to start. And I'm going to switch the status to start installation. And when I hit save, watch what happens. It says, would you like to add events for this new status to the project? And it looks like it's going to add six events. And I'm going to say yes. And it's going to add, after our quote, a whole series of activities. The shop drawings, then we're going to go to the panel saw. And you can see these have dates, and, and I believe they even have durations, uh, very short durations. <laughs> but uh, you get the idea. So how did these get here? It's, it's this idea, it's over in settings, of, of what's called a process template. And you can see that we have them for contacts, kind of around sales. And we also have them for projects, and this is the one we apply, uh, start installation. And if I click on it, you'll see that it's got a name, and then we're going to load these milestones when the project status becomes start installation. So as I change the status of contacts and projects, I can add items to the calendar. I can say what phase those items are in, if, they, if we're using resource scheduling, which resources is it going to take up? Resources can be, um, as you've probably seen from our seed code calendar videos, can be things like a resource could be an exam room, um, or it could be a process, right? In this case, building and shipping. Is there a particular staff member for this, uh, for this item? So you can see that we're creating a pattern of events that we've shown to be successful for getting projects done. We may have steps in here for QA and again, for staging our, our shipments. Um, that's a really powerful thing that you can use to start building processes, both in your own company and for your clients. And um, we're pretty excited about that. That's an example of one of the, the areas in Complete where we've, we've kind of solved the problem that we anticipate you're gonna have. You're gonna need to chain behaviors together. We think this is a great framework for starting new solutions. The relationship graph is very simple. The layouts are easy to modify and the tough stuff is already wired together. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel and figure out how to link contacts to each other, but can focus on adding that value for your customers about what's unique about the way they do things, adding facts about their projects, adding specific fields about their contacts, and really deliver a lot of value for them early on in the project, instead of spending the beginning of the project, you know, kind of getting all the boilerplate done. I uh, hope you'll dig into the file and check it out. We, uh, we think it takes advantage of a lot of cool stuff in FileMaker 13, stuff that was put in there to make our lives as developers easier. Uh, thanks.